Hey you guys, this is Michael James with Foodie and Fit. So I wanted to start making content geared towards helping people progress and maintain accountability towards their weight loss goals. So I am gearing up myself for two count them, two back-to-back -back bodybuilding shows uh, this month. One is the OCB Muscle Magnum in Charleston, South Carolina, and the other is the OCB Southwest Showdown in Phoenix, Arizona. And so as part of that, I've really had to learn how to dial in my nutrition even more and just focus on that because my last competition was at the end of February in Phoenix. So for those of you who are interested in losing weight, why should you listen to me or why should you journey me, help progress your journey with me? Uh, well, I used to be 300 pounds and that was my walking around weight. And that was at its worst. I've lost weight. I've mostly been heavy most of my life, especially most of my adult life. Right now it's actually getting to a point where it's almost actually even with not being heavy. But so I used to be 300 pounds and then for the most part I always hung around the 230 range. My fit used to be, oh I got down to 215 and that was me fit. And now I'm in the 185s, hopefully being 182 by showtime uh, this month. But so I know how it feels. I've tried every stupid diet at the time, every workout plan and thought process that goes through people's mind. And I know that they don't work. Or that they work for some, but they don't work for most and they're not sustainable. I worked out for five, six hours a day doing lifting twice a day, cardio for four hours, also doing running and other stuff back in 2008 when the economy tanked. Oh, 2009 when uh, the, the president was elected, Clear Channel had just laid off of a bunch of employees on the day he was inaugurated and I was one of those employees. So I thought, you know, I'll get in shape i started doing dance i started well, i said lifting got to two a days and i wasn't seeing the progress that i wanted i saw progress so i was happy about that but i wasn't seeing the progress i wanted and like i said i've tried every diet and that's why these things are not necessary especially being a physique competitor now to know that i'm in better shape than i thought i ever could be and i'm doing way less like that gives me hope and hopefully I can impart some of that to you guys, my friends and family and anyone who's watching just to help make sure that you can understand and like realize, hey, everyone's going to come with you, come to you with a, hey, this works better or show you something that's a little bit more alluring, but that doesn't work most of the time. And if you can stop following the crowd, it's only for your betterment. I mean... The fitness industry is a billion dollar industry for a reason because very few people have the results and a lot of people want the results. And so, hey, if if there was something that ever just worked and everyone just did it and everyone was walking around as either skinny as they wanted or looking like Greek gods, the fitness industry would be over. And that would be a great thing, but you know, not if your goal is to make money in the fitness industry. So that's why it's just important to like set up a very basic foundation that just progresses and pushes yourself so that you can't expect yourself to, you wouldn't try to run a marathon tomorrow without having trained for it and built up to it. So that's what weight loss should be. And that's what I just want to make sure to talk about. And hopefully I can touch into more things in the later videos, but let's talk about how do you get started? Getting started is first identifying what's your end goal. Now, when I ask people that, they always say, I want to weigh blah, 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 because blah, blah, blah. I want to weigh 150 pounds because in high school, and it's almost always high school, I weighed blah, blah, blah. That is a goal, and at least that's tangible, but one of the things is you have to, you should remember the scale is a tool. It is, should not be the end result and that would be the dictating factor of if you hit your goal or not. I have lost a lot of weight 
and didn't really do core work or certain things like that. And then lost not as much weight or gained weight. So I went back up and then lost weight again and then started focusing more on bodybuilding. And then when I was 10 pounds heavier, I looked a lot better. And that's why you can't really focus on numbers as a goal because, okay, you hit your number, but you don't have the look you want. If you said, you know what, I want to look just like Halle Berry and she's a hundred and whatever pounds and then you get there and then you're naked getting out of the shower looking in the mirror and you're just like i don't really like how this looks like you're gonna hit your goal and also not hit your goal so that's why please do not focus on the scale identify find the physical body type that you want so i've sat down with friends and i've talked about hey who do you want to look like not you can't get their results you, everyone's specific genetics are individualized so you cannot copy exactly someone's things like the way people's abs are their muscle and uh, muscle insertions and genetics it's very unique but you can get into the ballpark so for me as a physique competitor i hold myself to what the professional physique competitors look like so part of that is okay well how, how do I know what I should be doing? Okay, well, so what does a physique competitor look like? Okay, well, that's, that's, that's the goal. And then you reverse engineer it. How do I work backwards? Okay, well, what are my, what's my exercise regimen to get there? Not necessarily what do they say, because a lot of times, unfortunately, celebrities and some fitness influencers put out a lot of misleading information or things that sound good and may not be healthy or things that I don't know they just put out bullshit and that's important to realize just because that's how a lot, that's again that's why a lot of people can't follow those things so after I've assessed and I said okay I want to look like one of the top OCB men's physique competitors and then I've said like, well, what should my training look like? Since I've been lifting for a while, when I've been fat, when I've been uh, not as fat, when I've been athletic, I've been lifting. So I decided to change my program to uh, six days a week. So that's not necessary for someone who's just starting off. And someone who's just starting off like yourself, your goal is to like, let me get in there and do so much. And then I really want to feel it. And let me go hard. And that's something that I always hear. It's like, oh, they're going to go hard and all this other stuff that just leads to them burning out and quitting in three weeks. Please. That's why you want to set up the proper expectations, the goal, and then the plan to, like, how do I hit that goal? So after you find, this is what I want to look like. Here's the plan. So a lot of people hate the idea of weightlifting, uh, especially... Females will say that they don't want to get blocky or they don't want to get big or they don't want to get too masculine thinking like that's easy if you knew what it took for a woman to put on size You'd be like, oh, that's that's yeah, hard. That's actually like a concerted effort like hey if you are benching Twice your weight or one and a half times your weight. You're gonna get a large chest I know because as a guy that's the goal as a physique competitor, that's the goal is like, okay, I'm doing more. I am bench pressing twice my weight. That's my goal as a, as a man and a men's physique competitor. For the people who are not competing, and I'll, and I'll jump between talking about com competing and just for a regular person, if that's not your goal is to be a competitor, then you don't need to go that way. First, for women, like, you can just you should still weight train and still do everything I'm doing to a point. Like if you were new to this and you said, okay, I'm setting up my plan, but I like, okay, I'm going to try this weightlifting, but I'm going to avoid the bench press. My question is why the bench press is a fundamental key. That's big and everyone should do it. It's just how much. So yes, if you're a power lifter, you're going to be lifting. You don't want to hit just two times your your body weight. You want to hit three or two and a half or more. Bodybuilders, 
it's going to be less because it's not as power focused. Like, yes, you still want to be strong, but it's uh, for muscle growth, hypertrophy. So for the average person, especially if that's not your goal, and if your goal is not to compete, dial that back. Hey, at least get to being able to do your body weight. You're not going to get big. You're not going to get blocky. You don't have typically the hormones to do that. And you have to have the nutrition to support that. And it's this whole interconnected little cycle. So please trust me, everyone should, if you compare, if you care about your physique and how you look aesthetically, bodybuilding, even if you're like, I'm never going to be a bodybuilder, like a professional bodybuilder, and I'm never going to step on stage. Bodybuilding has the answer for you. It has the answer for you because it's concerned about fat loss uh, your metabolism, muscle growth or gain or maintaining and that fine little balance. And that's all that, uh, bodybuilding is. So from the mass monsters in the open category, those bodybuilders who, Hey, they want to put on as much size as possible, as humanly possible, uh, to my category, which is like, Hey, we still want to be muscular, but not, overly so not hyper developed so like there's different goals and aspects to it so for a regular person trust me i know it's scary but consider this you want to learn how to do this now if you and i see some people get into crossfit and they say like well that's the new hotness or boot camps and these things but just like but what is your goal that's why i ask look at this look at this physique this is what i want to go to how can I reverse engineer to get there? I have got it. I've been into running off and on for a long time. When I first started losing weight in 2019 from to get from 234 to 200 pounds at that point, uh, I didn't do any extra cardio. Like I walk and I don't consider that cardio, especially it's just about not anything challenging but like I didn't take up running or anything until I'd already lost weight because it was easier on my body to be 34 pounds lighter. It's just easier to run at that point versus if you start there thinking like, oh, okay, well, this is how you get it. Uh, you can lose weight through cardio, but that shouldn't be the goal is to lose weight through cardio because it's an endless grind. If you look at, uh, we'll sticking with running. If you look at a marathon runner and a sprinter, there's two different body types. A sprinter can kind of have a little bit more of a athletic physique like a bodybuilder would, especially men's physique or uh, men's uh, classic physique, has that sort of like muscular look. Even a female sprinter is just like, oh, she's in shape. Endurance runners is people who go run for 26 miles regularly. They look a little thinner, sicklier, not as strong, not that they don't have great endurance and they, they aren't athletes, but it's just a different aesthetic. So that's why it's trying to reverse engineer. Don't focus on doing so much cardio, focus on the nutrition. So we have the goal, we're looking at how to reverse engineer it. And so bodybuilding, lifting weights or weight training, cause that's, that's that bodybuilding is the sport, but you can just lift weights. It doesn't necessarily have to be to that sport can help you get there. And so one of the things that people, and this is why I also hate using uh, numbers as a goal, is your body composition changes throughout your life. And so especially when you're younger and you're more active and stuff and you had more muscle mass and had less fat, even if you weren't like very muscular, you had a better metabolism because you had a lot more muscle. And when you start losing that muscle, like your metabolism takes a hit. So when people just say like, oh, I have a fast metabolism, some of the stuff, honestly, a lot of times they don't. Uh, and you don't have a slow metabolism if you're bigger. Usually actually bigger people have a faster metabolism. It's just, again, getting the nutrition aspect under control and then just learning how to narrow down that big picture. So focus on your eating. I have found the most success in my weight loss through calorie counting. People hate that. That was a thing that I swore I would never do. And then I watched a documentary that was called, I want to look like that guy. And it was about a body, a cameraman 
and magician. He became a bodybuilder at the age of like 40 and got in shape and won like second place at a show. And I was watching it. And at first, the guy was just, uh, he partnered with a professional bodybuilder who owned a gym. And he said like, hey, for the next eight months, I just want you to lift weights. And I was like, that's fantastic. I've already been lifting for two years at this point, nonstop. So like, let me keep watching. Okay, cut to eight months later in the documentary. The guy has made some gains, got some muscle. It does change how you look. So like he looked better without having really did too much with his nutrition. And then came the nutrition part where they figured out where he, uh, the, the pro bodybuilder said, okay, well, now we're going to start looking at your calories. Here, here is your caloric intake. Please, if you're using, if you're trying to figure out your caloric intake, bodybuilder.com has the best calorie calculator that I have seen. I use my fitness pal and I have, I think over 2000 days in a row consecutively logged. Do not trust their calorie ca calculator. It has been wrong for me. I've seen it be wrong for friends. Not that there's no one that it may not be right for, but I just haven't seen good numbers come out of that. So I like bodybuilding.com's free calorie calculator. You can plug in your height, weight, all your information. Chances are you may not be as active as you think. I've seen people put, oh, you know, I'm moderately active. I was like, mm, I don't think you are. Just being truthful. Uh, and they're like, no, no, I walk and I do stuff. I was like, okay, well, I mean, I walk too, and I also lift. Uh, how many steps do you have? Oh, you know, I get, I for sure get 10,000 a day. I was like, okay, um, I've been getting 25 to 30, and I think I'm moderately active. So, adjust, because you can always later on after several months, readjust and maybe uh, increase your calories or decrease them, but that's the best way to get a gauge of here's how much you should be eating. Please do not just randomly pick numbers. Ladies, you do this the most where I can see like, I picked a thousand calories or 1100 calories as the default. And I've seen that for women who are 5'10". It's like, okay, that number's not your number. So how'd you get that number? It's like, oh, well, because my friend did this or I saw online, you cannot just start eating like thermo the laws of thermodynamics dictate how energy is transferred if you just start like the goal is to eat less energy so or can take in less energy so eventually your body will get rid of and start using that uh, energy people think that their body is just a machine that you know what if i just if my number says I'm supposed to eat 1,800 calories, if I just eat 1,000 calories, I'll lose weight faster. No, your body will just start fighting you more and more, and it, you will have terrible results with it starts messing with your hormones, starts impacting your hair, nail, skin, hormone, like your internal processes. You want to make it so that your body works with you, not works against you. If you're fighting your body, you're going to give up at some point. Most people do. Even if you have the best willpower, your body's working against you. Encourage it to work with you to help you lose weight. Because especially depending on if you're overweight or how overweight you are, your body wants to. Like your body will start adapting, but you have to just do it right. So please, don't just pull bullshit numbers out of the air. I'm telling you where you can get what I believe is to be a good caloric calculator so why not try it out and then trust it so i finally trusted it after watching that documentary oh my god it works is not what happened at first what happened at first because i was using the scale as an indicator of my goals my weight started going up for two weeks it started going up especially if you weigh yourself First thing in the morning, consistently before you eat, and if you do that consistently, so that's a little disheartening, and you're gonna to want to quit. Don't, because your body is adjusting. It's like, hey, especially if you're eating more than you were before, it is a weird feeling when you start seeing the scale go up. You are more inclined to believe that 
I'm doing something wrong. This isn't working. Oh my God, I am up five pounds of water weight. That's all that that is. So most likely. So trust in the process. What will happen is your body will start like, hey, we were getting underfed before and I start just grabbing and trying to store the calories. And then eventually, I, like I said, after that two week period where typically I would have quit if I had not seen that documentary, my body started losing weight. And first it was like, oh, three pounds. It's like, damn. It's like, yes, that's the beauty of water weight. Uh, this is why also, please don't do keto. Don't do any of these other unnecessary things. All it really does is, going back to laws of thermodynamics, is uh, just fat loss is how much a certain amount of energy comes from food. If you go, this is your uh, maintenance. Anything below that, you will lose weight. Anything above that, you'll gain weight. It's, it's not complex, but some people think like, oh, well, keto and then ketosis. and But a lot of those things, the fundamental is if you're eating less. Because you could do keto and then eat crazy amounts more calories and you will gain weight. It's not like, it's nothing, it's nothing interesting and that's why hey some people go vegetarian or vegan or any of these things and talk about oh well, i lost weight and i got healthier it's like yeah if you cut out any of the macronutrients which your body needs especially anything that you might be eating in bulk you're gonna lose weight but like that's not that's not magic it's like okay cool you could cut out protein which i would highly advise against and a lot of people need to actually probably increase their protein intake yeah you'll lose weight Oh, you cut out carbs? Yeah, you'll lose weight. Oh, you cut out fats? Oh, you'll lose weight. But what's the detriment? The detriment is your body needs these things. Your body needs protein to help build muscle. Your body needs carbs for as an energy source, but carbs and fat for your hormones. And especially if you're a female, please do not start sacrificing your hormones because besides it making might make you moody guys moody as well but besides make it moody like when your estrogen and uh testosterone levels which guys and girls both have both just in different cat different degrees starts dropping you will feel terrible and so as a bodybuilder it is skating around understanding that and then like finding the degree of like how much fat can i lose and still ride a little bit lower level since I'm depriving my body of its fat stores beyond what it is normally comfortable with and beyond its set weight point. So you have the calorie calculator. All right, cool. It says a number. So what do you do next? Now, if you do what the average person does, you freestyle it, you guess and then you're wrong, and then things go horrible. Please, take the time. This is the only time I, I use MyFitnessPal for data storage and to plug in my information and say, this is what I'm doing every day. I don't use the numbers it gives me for uh, calorie intake or whatever. I'm just using it to hold my information. So this is when you would use MyFitnessPal. So if I got my number today, what I'm going to do today is figure out how can I eat for tomorrow? So this is how I started off and I started making real progress is if you just start doing it freestyling, being on my fitness pal and just randomly trying to figure out, well, how much was this and how much was that is stressful and you will crack. And I have not seen too many people be wildly successful doing that. So the best thing you can do is what I've learned is to like pre-plan a day, see what that looks like. And so that's not, that's calorie estimation, but the step that bodybuilders take to, you know, professionals who lose fat, who lose ridiculous amounts of fat consistently and regularly do this is you have to measure your food. Now that's annoying, but it works. I lost, 30 pounds in three months in 2015, 16, uh, doing this. And then when I had gained weight in 2018 and started 2019, I said, okay, it was 
February 15th, I think it is, of 2019. I had headshots uh, coming up for acting. I was like, okay, I need to lose weight because I'm fat again, fatter. Uh, but now I, now I know, now I can trust in this process. It's going to be easier. It's not just figuring it out because once you have results and once you've gotten there, it's easier to get back there. So I was able to still allow for every, to have one major food holiday or event every month as I lost weight. So I lost 34 pounds, 30, 34 pounds within three and a half months. I was 30 pounds in three and a half months, but it was 34 pounds total through for the year and still eating out. So uh, there's a barbecue festival, there's my birthday, there's Mother's Day, there's my mom's birthday. So I was still able to enjoy that stuff. So that's why, because it's moderation. If you track and measure 99% of your meals one day, in the month where you said, you know what, I'm just gonna barbecue and I'm just gonna like eat ribs, eat my face off. It's not gonna do anything. It's just if you consistently do not track and do not follow that information, you're of course going to be lost. You're of course gonna be lost because you don't know what you're doing. You were just guessing. Hey, do you know I thought when I was in Charleston, uh, before I started counting my calories, uh, I was just thinking I was eating healthy. I was eating these pork medallions from Costco and I thought, you know what, I'm being healthy. I eat one of these, I eat some green beans and uh, carb or sweet potatoes or whatever. And I thought like, hey, this is healthy. And it wasn't because those medallions were 12 ounces and a serving size is four. So like you can eyeball it and guess but until you see that scale saying, hey, that pork medallion is three times what you should be doing, you're just wrong. And it's sad if all it would have took was pre-planning. So sit there, as soon as you get your number, start planning out, hey, what am I gonna have for breakfast? And how, much, how many ounces or whatever? Oh, I know that I always buy, and. Make sure that what you're going to do is can be consistent. You can start designing your meals to be swap outable, but as long as there's still a very consistent theme. So tomorrow, I know I'm going to have great value, which is Walmart's brand, Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, because that has the most controllable amount of calories. There's no additional sugars, because as soon as you start adding fruit that comes pre-packaged, it's just loaded with sugars and everything else starts skyrocketing. So then I can control it. I'll make, first thing I'll do when I'll get up is I'll have that and a protein shake made with almond milk and uh, optimum nutrition protein powder. So I've figured this stuff out beforehand so it's not a surprise and I'll drink 16 ounces of water. So I already know that's the first thing I'm doing after I get up. It suddenly becomes easier to like, okay, so what am I gonna do next Tuesday for break for the first thing. So I'm doing two breakfasts now. That's part of my training as a bodybuilder, but that's not what you need to do. So, and is because the main thing is as long as you're hitting your calories, especially early on, that's all that really matters. So I've already can know what I'm going to do in two weeks from now for breakfast. That takes weight off my shoulders and that, keeps me from overshooting my target. Because after I finish punching in the day before that meal, what can I do for tomorrow for lunch? Okay, well, mm, I have salmon, I have bar, I have uh, beef uh, flank steak, I have pork loin, I have chicken, you have whatever. You can start designing your meals beforehand so that way you're like, okay, cool, I know, bam, lunch, dinner, snacks, you can, okay, I'm supposed to be at, uh, let's just say, for me, I'm at eating about 1,900 calories right now So I'm because I am in uh, cut. Uh, so I can start planning and changing things up. Okay, well, when I need to figure out how to re remove calories, 
I can start looking at meals and stuff and start making some modifications and say like, okay, so I want to make sure I for sure hit 1900 calories tomorrow. I don't see how I'm going to do this. My snacks, I like you plan your snacks in, especially if you have a sweet tooth, you can still include things and make sure it's not calorie dense. Or if it is calorie dense, that's fine, but you can have all these things planned out. Uh, so for me, I recently started adjusting things and I switched from flank steak for dinner, which is 160 calories, I believe for four ounces to chicken, to chicken breast, which is, I think, what, 100 calories for four ounces? That's how you can start making modifications and adjust. And then you hit your killer goal for tomorrow. So that's the top level uh, of how to plan for tomorrow. But how do you make sure you hit tomorrow? Because one of the things is once I started doing this, uh, I had a problem. I would drive by uh, the McDonald's on Ashley Phosphate Road in Charleston, South Carolina when I lived out there. And I wouldn't want to go home and eat and cook and do all that stuff. I'd be like, man, some McNuggets sound good. They were never as good as they what they would sound and stuff, but like, it would just be easier than spending the 40 minutes to make dinner. So I started meal prepping. And you can go as full full out as you want. For me, my current meal prep is I like to keep things fresh so I don't go crazy with pre-cooking all these ingredients and stuff. Right now, I just take the meat, I weigh it out, I vacuum seal it, and so I have a little four ounce portion of flank steak waiting for me for today's lunch downstairs. Boom, it's so much easier for me to cook that. And you can pre-cook it if you want, but I just have it raw so I can still have it as fresh as I want because I'm not a big fan of leftovers and stuff and the food saver helps get ever from keeping having the leftover flavor, but that works for me. So you can just figure out how that works for you. Some people want to do uh, the prepackaged meal uh, programs or lean cuisines or any of these things that like those are great little cheats but figure out how that weighs into your total calories and stuff so since i want to cook i want to do all this stuff myself i have it pre-planned out and so it's a lot easier for me to integrate that in to what i'm supposed to do for the day so also i can swap out my veggies very easy i can be like okay well I do have broccoli, I do have cucumber, I'm sorry, zucchini, I do have green beans, I do have cherry tomatoes, I do have potatoes, I have all this stuff, and like, actually, let me take out the potatoes, because that's actually a little bit more dense calorically, so I can like start fun fundamentally swapping things, because it's just like, hey, this is 20 calories, this is 25, it's not a big deal, I can keep the variety there for myself, so it makes it better. So, that is just video one this is just the first thing to try to help you plan out how to get started because what tends to happen again is people rush in guns ablazing and make mistakes and then feel overwhelmed and then force themselves into cheating because they didn't pre-plan the things that they need to pre-plan this is like anything else that a lot of people do and have success in a little bit of planning helps out so you don't have to cook all meals for the week on Sunday because I hate doing that. That's a waste of my Sunday, and I like I'm over that. I'm never do that again. Well, I mean, right before competition, like for a prep peak week, but that's different. But on a general basis, you don't need to. If you just follow these steps, you can lose weight. I know because I've done it twice, and I'm doing that sort of stuff to push myself further and to be an OCB competitor. My goal is to become an OCB pro this year. And so that just takes dialing in and having less room for excuses and mistakes. And the better I can be about encouraging myself to stick to my diet plan, the more success I'll have losing fat and being able to win pro. If you're not trying to be a bodybuilder, that's 
that's fantastic. These sting tactics work for men, for women, for people who have just no interest in bodybuilding. It's just simple, it's just simple math, really. As soon as someone, if someone just pointed to you and said, hey, if you just outline general things to eat every day and that total for per day totals at least this number, not too much more, not more than 100 more of whatever your total do, uh, daily intake should be for fat loss, you will lose weight. Oh my God. Like as soon as like, as soon as you see it yourself, you will become a believer. You'll be like, Oh my God, I'm like, yeah, it's working. And then like clockwork, you're going to expect, I'm going to see progress. And that's the problem with using the scale, which is just a tool as a, as the defining measure of that progress, because sometimes the scale may not change for two weeks and then it'll drop four pounds that following time and you're just like, oh my God. But like you will have still made progress and start seeing changes. As a bodybuilder, the changes aren't always there uh, on the scale uh, made most of the time, initially. But then I'll start seeing uh, the telltale indicators of more veins, more vascularity start popping up on my arms or my legs or my abs or other places I didn't have it especially not even doing chest day. I'm starting to get more veins popping up on my shoulders, uh, which is letting me know I'm getting to a low enough body fat that my shoulders, which uh, I didn't think were fat, have lost the little amounts of fat, some of the little amounts of fat that is stored all over your body and starts revealing more aspects of my physique. Like you will see progress just as a normal person but you have to give it time. So time, have a defined goal that's more than just a weight on the scale and a plan to how on how to hit that goal through eating food. You don't have to do cardio and a lot of the big mass monsters, big bodybuilders who are like 240, 250 pounds and having a six pack and everything's bulging and shredded and whatever, some of those guys don't do cardio. So like plan that for after, but don't make that your default plan. So please trust me. I know because I've been there and I've done all these things and I'm trying to do better. And that's what the ser video series is, uh, hopefully. So I can start walking you through what I'm doing. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time like in the next video talking about what I'm doing for my upcoming shows. Uh, but then help keep you accountable. And it's not just, uh, it's like a lot of things. Sometimes you know, but you need the reminder. So I still watch other YouTube videos for the reminder, for the little just, because again, it's very easy to, yeah, yeah, I know, and then go off the deep end. So all these reminders are little checks and balances that help me stay on the path. And so yeah, I love like Jeff Nippert. I love uh, Cliff Wilson, who is my coach. I love uh, just, there's so many videos. I mean, uh, Stephanie Buttermore, who is science-based and she's went all in and she's, so she's put on more weight, but to fix her uh, eating, like there's so much information. I try to watch as much as possible. I watch the stuff from the, natural bodybuilders. I watch stuff from the unnatural body, the enhanced bodybuilders who take steroids and supplements and certain things to get their physique because it's just a little reminder on the drive that helps keep me focused because I stopped using the scale as a goal and start using the reminders and the goal of, hey, this is what it takes. This is what a men's pro physique uh, bodybuilder looks like okay, I'm not there yet, but I will be. So thank you guys for my time. Please, if you like the video, like, subscribe, and share. And if you have any questions or any topics that you want me to cover, my email is michaeljamestheactor at gmail.com. Please feel free to email me. I will be trying to put these videos up as regular as possible. So hope you enjoy.